Woo! It is getting cold out there. Hey everyone, this is Bill from Keep Running with BK and with it uh, getting cold outside, I think it's a perfect time to share with you some training tips for winter and cold weather training. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. We'll be right back right after this. Much better, much warmer too. <laughs> hey everyone, again, thanks for joining here. I'm uh, checking out this video here on Keep Running with BK. And without feathers, too, commented on a recent video I did that now that we're entering into winter, can you share and discuss winter training tips for running in the cold weather? And so that's what I'm going to focus on in this video. And I'm going to focus my attention on two aspects one, what to wear, and two, on navigating the harsher, colder conditions. And a lot of the tips that I'm gonna give you probably are gonna be appropriate for where I live and the climate that I deal with in the winter. And I acknowledge that for some of you, you may be dealing with colder temperatures and others may even be dealing with milder uh, temperatures. And so I want to just focus kind of on some of the basic principles that you can then tweak and customize based on where you live and what colder and what winter means in your part of the world. And along with that, as I get into some of the what to wear tips that I'm gonna give, I just wanna be clear, I'm not recommending specific brands or even specific uh, types of materials and that sort of thing. Again, I wanna focus on the principles and the concepts and then each of you focus on what's within your budget and what's within your preferences. Um, a lot of these things that I'm going to show you, I've accumulated over the years. Uh, it's really a hodgepodge collection. Personally, I don't have necessarily a brand loyalty or I don't seek out certain brands over others. Uh, I'll leave it to you to choose the brands within your budget and preferences. So the first thing I want to start off with is when I think of cold weather training, the first thing that comes to mind for me is protecting my ears and my fingers. Those are the things that seem to get the most uncomfortable. When it comes to protecting my fingers, uh, some basic gloves is really what you're looking at. And I have basically three pairs of gloves that I use when I'm running. I'll categorize them as light gloves, medium gloves, and heavier weight gloves. Uh, I typically use the lightweight gloves when it starts to get chilly in the late fall into the early maybe winter months when the temperatures are probably um, around 40 degrees. Then I use my medium weight gloves once it kind of gets down into the 30s or just above freezing to just below freezing. And then when we get into the 20s, which is you know eight to 10 degrees below zero uh, or below freezing and colder, then I will wear more of the heavier weight gloves. So, you know, the medium sized gloves, they're pretty tattered and torn because I wear them probably the most throughout the winter. Um, these heavier set ones I just got last year. Um, and, you know, my hands tend to sweat in these unless it gets really, really, really cold. Now, when it gets really, really cold, one of the other things that I do, especially on windy days, is I have a pair of windproof mittens. These are very lightweight material. Um, themselves would probably, I know for a fact they wouldn't keep my hands warm. Um, but what they do allow is in those really cold extremes, when I have a pair of gloves on, I can put these windproof mittens on as well, just for another layer of protection. They also happen to have a reflector stripe that goes across them. Um, as when we run in winter, oftentimes we have less daylight to run. And so you might find when you're running earlier or later in the day when it's dark, that extra layer or extra feature is a nice to have. And I'll talk more about some of the safety items a little bit later in this video. When it comes to protecting my ears, um, in years past, I've used a headband that, you know, basically protects my forehead, wraps around my ears, 
protects the back of my head as well, but then, you know, allows heat to escape off the top. I did that for years when I was younger. Um, as I've gotten older, um, I tend to wear a stocking cap similar to this one here, where, you know, I'm wearing this. It, it protects my ears and nice. Now, I'm putting this on, not to demonstrate to you what a stocking cap is, but this particular one has some stitching in it that is also reflective threads. So when I'm running in the winter, when it's dark, um, oncoming cars or vehicles um, can see me better because they're picking up some of the stripes that uh, have reflective material. So that's, again, a nice added safety feature. If you're looking for a stocking cap to run in the winter, look for that feature. It's a nice to have. In extreme conditions, I also have a couple versions of a mask that I'll put on. Again, it covers your head and it provides a layer of, you know, protection for my ears, you know, fully wrapped around here. I oftentimes will wear a hat on top for added warmth, or even sometimes what I'll do is I'll just put the cap on, especially when it's snow flurries and, and snowing. I might wear a hat with the brim just to kind of protect the wind and the, the snow that's blowing around from hitting me in the eyes. Um, but it's nice to have this face mask on the really cold days. It keeps your face, your cheeks, your chin. I don't have a beard, so I don't have that to help keep me warm. Uh, so this really helps. It also has some mesh material here in the front that allows uh, for a little bit uh, easier breathing. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is uh, based on the principle of layering. The nice thing about layering and using some of these examples of things that I'm going to show you is you can add or remove layers, you know, to your comfort level, to your preference, to your temperature. And all of us are different. As I've gotten older, I tend to either apply more layers or thicker layers um, as I become more susceptible to cold than when I was much younger. So oftentimes what I'll wear is typically I will stick with some sort of tech material um, that's sweat wicking that takes the moisture away from my body so that it's not sitting on my skin when that cold air is hitting and, and, and kind of freezing along my skin um, back when i was much younger i used to wear cotton and we didn't have a lot of tech fibers back then and when they started coming i certainly couldn't afford them at that time and oftentimes that those cotton shirts will just kind of hold that moisture and that kind of freezes and gets cold and you can feel that and uh, that's that's not a good thing so at least the layer against your skin i would highly encourage some sort of tech fiber sometimes i'll wear a short sleeve like this and then i'll layer it with a longer sleeve shirt you know something similar to this where i'll, I'll do that sometimes i'll just go with uh, the long sleeve it really depends um, on on how cold it is the colder generally speaking the more layers that I apply. I also have some long sleeved winter um, shirts that I wear that are a thicker material. This is probably twice as thick as this one is here. Um, again, sometimes I will, will layer those. Uh, when it comes to the really low temperatures, for me that's when it gets into say the 20s or the teens or even single digits. Um, I will wear a vest like this. Um, Again, it's almost like a, it's not quite fleece, but it is like a, a more of a thermal type layer. Um, it's thicker that I can put this on uh, either over a long sleeve shirt like the one I'm wearing or even uh, against my skin. I've done both and, uh, you know, I'll do this and it just keeps that little warmth layer and then I'll layer, you know, the long sleeve shirts like this over it. Um, and that really helps me, especially as I get older again and more susceptible, more susceptible to the cold and getting cold chills and things like that. The nice then on top of that, the last layer that I usually wear, and this may be surprising to, to a lot of people, especially if you're newer to running, is I will wear a very light windproof, waterproof jacket. And I wear this pretty much all year round. If it's raining, this is what I'm wearing. If it's cool, uh, this is what I'm wearing. If it's windy, this is what I might be wearing. If it's winter, this is probably what I'm wearing. And again, it's not necessarily a warmth layer, although it does serve that function. But once I put all these on, what this does is in the winter, one of the things that you're protecting against is the wind. It can get very windy. And having a windbreaker like this on, as your top layer 
um, does a, a lot of good by cutting down that wind, which can add to that cold feeling. Um, the other nice thing about this is I like to, to uh, wear this because of the bright color. In winter, again, we have less daylight, and so it's more likely I'm going to be running when it's, it's darker out. The other thing about um, winter running is fewer people are actually outside exercising. And whatever, for whatever reason, drivers just assume that there's nobody out exercising. Who would be crazy like us runners to be out running when it's cold like this or when it's snowing or when the conditions might be uh, super cold? Having a bright color like this stands out and grabs people's attention because even during nice weather i find that drivers aren't always paying attention but having this bright color this bright layer just increases visibility again that's a nice safety feature the last uh what to wear the suggestions i'm going to have for you is i would invest in some running tights now i i have typically have two types again i have a thinner layer that i'll wear when it gets into say the low 40s high 30s to basically freezing so you know that 10 to 15 degree range there uh, above freezing i'll work, typically wear this lighter pair once it gets to around freezing or below then i'll wear a thicker pair um, just because um, more from the wind to be honest with you because when that wind starts whipping around it's below freezing this thin pair just doesn't quite get the job done and so wearing the thicker pair like these um, does a great job in keeping me warm. So I've kind of shared some of these tips as I've gone along that had some safety features in it, like the reflective stripe on the gloves, the reflective threads on the hat, or uh, even the bright colored windbreaker that helps to make create visibility. Um, there's some other things that you should consider when running in the winter just as a safety tip and the first is make sure you have a reflective vest um, you know i'll put this on if i'm running in the morning or if i'm running in the evening when it's dark um, it's because it has the reflector stuff on it again they come in different forms different shapes even different colors some are the bright orange the hunter orange or uh, the, the bright yellow like this some other safety features is, especially when it's uh, early morning or again when it's dark, is having some sort of light. So I've worn the kind that you clip on to like your tights or your shorts or um, whatever that kind of blinks. I've used those. Some, some vests will actually have blinking light features. There's lots of variations out there. Um, I know a number of people have like a headlamp. So, you know, this will go on your head. You know, and this way you can kind of see where you're going, but also people that are coming on towards you when you're running can also see a light. I've also started running with one of these variations, which kind of goes over like this, comes around, clips on, but then the light here is like on my chest or even maybe right, uh, right on my abdomen there. And that lights the way. Uh, I tend to like this better because for me, the headlamp bouncing on my head, at least um, in my experience, it tends to bounce a little bit more than I would like. And I tend to get a headache when that starts happening. But this works because it lights a little bit closer to the ground. Um, I can still run very comfortably and I don't have to deal with that. And then there's a red blinking light on the back uh, for any traffic coming from behind me. They can see me from quite a distance off. Just again, creating visibility is a good safety feature and something to keep in mind. Now, one of the other things when navigating extreme temperatures that I have used on occasion is um, I picked up some of these. Uh, I don't even know what you call them. Uh, I don't use them very often, but uh, they're like tracks. They have, uh, it's a little like a rubber based uh, slip on. You put your shoe in this and then on the bottom, it's got some metal studs. So I typically run on the streets or on the roads um, when I run in the winter and sometimes there's packed down snow or there's maybe ice patch like that. Um, if it's like that everywhere, then these metal studs kind of help to grip 
can prevent slipping and that sort of thing. Or even if I do occasional trail running or even trail races, as when I've typically worn those in the winter, um, again, it just helps to catch, especially on those uphills and downhills, so you're not slipping as much um, when it's really, really cold and you have packed down snow or ice. The other thing is, uh, I recently got some of these. These are like uh, winter briefs or underwear, if you will, uh, just to give another added layer of protection from the wind in those extreme uh, cold temperatures. Again, when you're wearing tights, there's not a whole lot of protection there. That's just another added layer of, of protection and warmth, if you will, during extreme conditions. Um, You'll notice that I didn't really talk a whole lot about socks or shoes when it comes to winter running, and there are certainly options out there. Uh, I'm gonna leave that to your own personal preference. My personal take on it is most of the runs that I'm doing in the winter are for an hour or less, and I don't really think, at least in the conditions that I run in, and I'm not trying, I, I typically try to run, avoid running in snow where I would get snow constantly coming on my shoes. I'm trying to stay to plowed streets, shoveled uh, sidewalks and occasionally I have to go through stretches that aren't like that but generally speaking uh, I try to avoid where I get a lot of snow in so I don't necessarily think waterproof socks are something that I need to be overly concerned about and I don't stress about what kind of shoes um, I don't have the luxury of having uh, that large of a shoe rotation or a budget for specialized shoes for that I generally wear the same training shoes I would year-round um, I generally don't buy super light weight running shoes that have just that mesh that might be a, um, allow more moisture or snow and, and things like that in them. So um, that might be something to consider. Oftentimes I'll wear trail shoes uh, in the winter when there's packed snow from the snow plow or what have you and I'll wear those. Um, on my longer runs uh, where I'm maybe out there running for an hour and a half, two hours or longer. Again, I don't do a lot of those in the winter, especially if there's not good footing because it's hard to find a long enough route, a long enough stretch where I don't have to navigate unplowed roads or sidewalks that aren't cleared. Um, so I try to keep it within an hour, hour and a half. But when I do go longer, I may wear wool socks like I would wear during a trail race or something like that. Um, as they do a good job, even when they're wet, of keeping your feet warmer than, say, the typical socks that I would wear. And that kind of comes to some other training tips. I think when you're running in the cold, at least around here, that usually is accompanied with snow, slush, ice, that sort of thing. I'm typically looking for a long stretch or, or, or a route that I know is going to be well cleared. Uh, the snow plows have come through or there's uh, a long enough stretch of trail. Uh, I go down to the bike trail and run a lot and a lot of times the ground will warm up enough where that pathway will be melted away and I can still run even though there's snow on the ground. I'm looking for places that I can go where I have pretty good footing. I don't have to navigate things like ice um, or at least try to keep that to a minimum. The other thing is, is the winter time, because you have ice, because you have snow and things like that, it's not really conducive to lots of speed work, lots of hard running. And so I think it's a perfect time to do your base training, just to kind of slow down, just, you know, basic runs, work in some strides if you've got a stretch of, of, of road or do some, some hill sprints if you've got a, a hill that it's clear that you can do some, some hard hill sprints to get, again, some of that leg churn, but you know not turning yourself out and not slipping or potentially pulling something and getting hurt because you're trying to do hard efforts on slippery conditions. I've mentioned a couple of times that when you're in the winter, you know, the wind and the wind chill can be a, a risk and a danger factor. And so to the extent that you can think through this and plan for it, it's often a good idea during the winter to, um, when you're out running, especially on an out and back type of uh, arrangement, to run into the wind, the first part of your run, and then run with the wind to your back on the second half of your run. Typically our sweat, um, the heat that we're generating and the amount of sweat, um, that our body is producing 
accumulates over the course of the run and we're going to have more of that on the on the latter half and running into the wind we can feel those chills and this cold um, from the wind and the moisture kind of coming together more so than when we have the wind at our back if you're going to drive somewhere like when i go down to the bike trail and i'm driving down there and then i'm running in these cold conditions when i get back into the car that is when i'm most susceptible to the cold chills and so I oftentimes bring either a dry shirt to put on or a sweatshirt um, or I make sure I have my winter coat with me that I can put on afterwards and maybe even a dry hat just to kind of keep that heat in there um, as my body's beginning to cool down or my core temperature is cooling down. Um, when it's already compromised from dealing with that cold, it just helps uh, keep me warm and prevent the cold chills. And the last training tip that I'll, I'll leave with you is there are days when the conditions are just so bad. If you have access to a treadmill, getting treadmill work in in the winter, I know some people refer to it as the treadmill, and it's something that many people don't enjoy at all, but it is a great option if you have access to one, especially when conditions are bad, to make sure that you get your run in. You can control the environment. If you want to do some speed work, um, over the winter, doing it on the treadmill is a great option because you can control that environment for the most part. Uh, when running on a treadmill, just some real quick basic tips. I always suggest putting the incline at uh, a half to 1% to kind of simulate what flat running would be like. Um, it's great to be able to control the, you know, the speed there. I would make sure that you have a fan on you so that you're dissipating the heat that your body is generating when running on the treadmill, in the gym, or in a closed facility, especially in the winter um, when our bodies make adaptations to deal with the cold and then we go inside where it's warm and we're exercising, our bodies tend to generate a lot more heat. So having the, that fan to kind of keep us cool and help that sweat to evaporate will help make for more comfortable running conditions on the treadmill. Well, I hope that you found this helpful. Um, I, I hope this gives you some ideas. If this is um, a situation you're dealing with running in the cold, it can be a great time, a very peaceful time, a very enjoyable time of year to run. It can be a great way to build your base training, build your aerobic capacity, um, and enjoy your running. And uh, if you found any value in this video, I'd appreciate you clicking the like button there. If you're new here, thanks for checking out my channel. I've got a lot of other videos. And if you're interested in subscribing, I'd love to have you become a part of the Keep Running with BK community. And where we talk about all kinds of training insights, training tips, uh, and motivational ideas. And... Coming the first of the year, I'm going to be sharing in this video some new and exciting ideas I have for the channel just to try to really bring all of us together virtually and maybe engage in some ways where we can do some things together from afar and sharing that here on the channel as part of these videos. So uh, check back um, and I look forward to sharing that with you come the new part of the year. So until next time, stay safe. Train smart and keep running. It's like my mom used to always say, drinking something hot like that will warm your innards after a cold run. Thanks, mom.